Dr. Jessica Fush, and I am the host of the Biohack Your Pets podcast. I'm also a holistic veterinarian, a biohacker myself, and an animal wellness pioneer. I am on a mission to help you maximize your pet's health and wellness. On this podcast, we'll hear from leading experts about ancient techniques and therapies, as well as cutting edge ones too. I know the questions to ask, so let's dig deep and shift our approach from one that is reactive where we wait to treat disease to one that is proactive where we are intentionally creating wellness. Hello, it's your host, Dr. Jessica Fush. Today, I wanted to talk about the top 10 reasons why I recommend a home-cooked or home-prepared raw diet for your dogs. I've been doing these bite-sized nutrition lessons, and I'd really like to know if you're enjoying them. If you're loving this, please rate and review the podcast in whatever app you listen to them in. Apple iTunes is where I listen, and it's really helpful for me if you actually rate and review this podcast there. It will help get it out to more people. But the reason that I'm doing these nutrition lessons is tenfold. Well, there's a lot of reasons, but I thought maybe I should share those reasons with you so that you can understand and be inspired to take in that knowledge and apply it. All right, number one reason is that dogs' dentition, that means their teeth, is that of a carnivore. Yes, dogs are omnivores, but they have the teeth of a carnivore. Their jaw does not move side to side. If you open your mouth and you move your lower jaw, your mandible, it goes side to side. A dog's jaw does not do that. They cannot grind grains and grasses and foods. That does not mean that they can't utilize any plant material. It just means that they are supposed to primarily be eating meat, bones, organ meats, things like that. The second reason is their digestion. So it's on the same thing with anatomy. They have a short digestive tract and they have a higher pH in their stomach. So they can digest more meat and raw meat more easily than a human would be able to if you're comparing a human's digestive system, but way easier than, say, an herbivore like a cow or a horse. The third reason is that commercial dry food is dead food. It's extruded at 250 degrees under pressure. The vitamins and minerals are killed and denatured. The enzymes in the foods are denatured. The proteins are denatured. And that is why they have to add back in vitamins and minerals, which are not as bioavailable as real whole food. And they have to add in and spray on top things to make the animal want to eat it in the first place. They have to add palatability factors. So this is just dead food. It is not real food. It is very convenient, absolutely, but it is not the best choice. It is not even close to the best choice. The fourth reason is ingredient transparency and confidence. I do not want to have to worry about recalls. There's lots of dog food recalls. There have been some really major ones. There's a pretty big one going on right now with aflatoxins, with mycotoxins, which are killing dogs, okay? I don't want to have to worry about whether my pet's food is on that list. Now, I do worry about it because I'm a veterinarian and I want to make sure that my patients are covered. And so I'm on the email list for those recalls and I stay up to date about it. But that's one less thing that you want to have to worry about. There's The fifth reason is not really for your dog. It's for society as a whole. I want to improve our food system. By having small farmers using a rotational farming technique and an organic farming technique, we will have healthier meat to feed ourselves and our pets, happier and healthier animals that are farmed, as well as healthier soil and a healthier ecosystem and less carbon footprint. It is so much better to get your food locally rather than having it shipped or yeah, potentially across the ocean, right? So a better food system for the entire world, that's another reason. Number six is variety. When you eat the exact same food twice a day, every day, for years on end, you are more likely to develop food sensitivities. At least your dog is. I know this to be true. Studies have been done. It is very rare for a human to spontaneously develop a food sensitivity unless you've developed leaky gut, which is what's happening to our dogs. 
we need to be adding in variety. It's amazing the studies that have actually been done on just adding in some whole fresh greens and whole fresh foods like berries on top of dry kibble and the improvements that are seen in the dog's cognitive function, exercise tolerance, and cancer rates go down by a lot just adding on top of kibble, but imagine what we can do if we're actually feeding our dogs whole fresh food. So that leads me to number seven, phytonutrient magic. Okay, sulforaphanes come from broccoli and broccoli sprouts and other um, cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts and cabbage. Man, those things fight cancer. They are magic chemical compounds that are denatured if extruded and heated to high levels. Lycopene from tomatoes decreases cancer. All of these beautiful phytochemicals, phytonutrients that you just can't keep if you're going to heat to high levels and put into a shelf-stable cracker. They're going to die. You're not going to get the benefits. And your dog's not going to get the benefits. When I say you, I mean your dog. (laughs) So the phytonutrient magic of a variety of whole fresh foods, a variety of plant materials, and these phytonutrients are concentrated in animals that are fed a proper diet, that are allowed to forage. So if you feed a chicken that's out in the field foraging, they're going to have more phytonutrients in their organs. Even ruminants like goats and cows will have more phytonutrients stored in their different tissues than obviously if they're just fed corn. I have a story to tell. So my husband and I recently went out to dinner for our anniversary and the waitress actually said, and I won't name the restaurant because I was very grateful. It was a very nice steak restaurant, probably the most well-known nicest steak restaurant there is. And I was really grateful that my husband took me. What a privilege, right? But the waitress actually said, the server, she actually said, this is USDA grade A corn-fed beef. And I was like, what did you just say to me? (laughs) What? Corn-fed beef? Like, really? I actually shared with her later that my friends and I had done a taste test, a blinded taste test. We actually put blindfolds on, and every single one of us chose grass-fed beef as our top choice. We we made hamburgers. We got ground chuck. We got organic ground beef, and we got grass-fed ground beef. All of us chose the grass-fed beef. It tasted better. It is healthier for you. It is what a cow is supposed to eat. Okay? Grass-fed beef. It it shouldn't even say that. Corn-fed beef. I can't believe she used that as like a plus. Oh, man. It actually kind of made the steak taste worse to me. And that could be psychological or maybe I just didn't have a good one. I don't know. But wow. I can't believe she said that. Cows are supposed to eat grass. They're healthier when they do. So having the better food system actually helps to get these phytonutrient magical compounds even into the animals that we eat. All right, number eight is to avoid added chemicals, preservatives, and antibiotics. Now that is added to the animals before they're even slaughtered. That is added to the actual product, added to the, added to the grains they put antifungal agents sprayed on the grain, piles of grain, before they process them and put them into dog food. Not to mention the glyphosate that's sprayed on the fields of corn, wheat, and soy because they are made to be Roundup ready. And we all know Roundup causes cancer. Okay. Anti-caking agents, serious preservatives, like disgusting, awful chemicals that are even banned in other countries. We're avoiding those things. We're avoiding the high, the chemical compounds that are produced from high heat, heating meat to high heat. (laughs) Excuse me. They are called Mylard reaction products. And they're basically what happens when you burn a steak on a grill. You know, that's bad for you. That charred part, it, it tastes good. And as long as you don't eat grilled food too often, and as long as you don't like super burn it, you can get away with it. It's okay. But if you were to eat grilled meat and you were to cook it well done every single day, you will likely develop cancer. Studies have shown this to be true. And unfortunately, that's what's happening to our pet's food. They 
the meats have been changed from what is biologically appropriate to cancer-causing compounds. <laughs> it's awful. And number 10, number 10, oh gosh, I could go on. There's a lot more. But number 10 is probiotics. People are concerned about raw feeding for dogs because there's potentially pathogenic bacteria. That is true. Dogs handle it way better with the higher pH in their stomach. The fact that they eat poop, they lick their butts, they eat dirt, they are set up to be exposed to pathogenic bacteria. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use safe handle, like meat handling techniques. Of course you should. Uh, hopefully the meat that you get is not going to have serious pathogenic bacteria because it's a healthy animal that you're feeding to your healthy animal and you should not have a problem. If you have an immune compromise issue yourself, maybe you need to be a little bit more careful with this. But usually there are not pathogenic bacteria at high levels in freshly prepared raw meats and raw foods. But there are more bacteria living there. There are more bacteria on raw vegetables and there are good probiotics. These are good things that we want to populate the gut. These are actually beneficial bacteria that are very, very, very important. We still don't even know to what extent this matters, but we do know that the majority of our immune system is in our gut. We do know that the bacteria in our gut can determine whether we are depressed or not, and the same goes for our dogs. Those bacteria make vitamins, make short-chain fatty acids, they make chemical compounds that are like endorphins. These are very, very, very important bacteria that live in the gut. They help to digest the food and they help to protect us from pathogenic bacteria. And when you're constantly eating a dead food, you are not getting that. They're not getting enough fiber, they're not getting enough good bacteria, and they're not getting other chemical compounds that are protective for the gut. So those are my 10, my top 10, I shouldn't say just the only 10. These are the top 10 reasons that I recommend a home cooked or raw diet for dogs. Whether you choose home cooked or raw is a whole nother discussion. It depends, right? But what I realize is that it is a little bit, okay, it's a lot less convenient, okay? It takes a lot more time to source the ingredients for a home cooked and raw or raw diet for your dog. It can be a lot more expensive, especially if you're just doing a prey model raw diet for dogs. If you're just feeding meat and you have large breed dogs, that's why I think to meet in the middle, I do a lot of home cooked. I teach my clients to cook for their dogs because we are able to use some carbohydrate sources to fill in the calories and vitamin minerals, right? We are able to use these things and having them be fresh and closer to their original form and organic whenever possible is a lot healthier than having them be highly processed, completely denatured, extruded, shelf-stable crackers in a bag. Okay, your dog is going to be able to get the fiber, the benefits, the vitamins, the minerals from these plant materials way better than if it's in a kibble. Okay, so we're not going to talk about whether you choose raw or you cho choose home cooked. That's somewhat of a personal decision, but I highly urge you to learn more about your dog's nutritional requirements and learn more about feeding a whole food diet versus feeding a kibble diet primarily. Please reach out to me. You can find me on Instagram at uh, keyvetcare. You can email me keyvetcare at gmail.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> Just if you have any questions about this, oh yeah, YouTube at Farmer's Market Fido. I teach people how to cook for their dogs there with videos and more are coming out on a regular basis. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I hope you're enjoying these lessons and share them with a friend. Thanks. Thank you so much for listening to the Biohack Your Pets podcast. This is your host, Dr. Jessica Fush. I have a few favors to ask. If you're loving it, please go ahead and give us a five-star review and share it with a friend. Share it with a pet parent who loves their pets just as much as you do. They will appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.